discovered Toronto Theatre Academy, which is our drama school, and this is where we train actors and develop actors for the profession at large. And um, I would like to personally, and on behalf of everybody in the cast, uh, thank you for coming here and making the effort to come and see our production. And more importantly, also to see how well we're doing or how not well we're doing. <laughs> um, but the important thing is, uh, the most important thing for us is to have a live audience, to put everything to a test when the chips are down. Meaning that um, it's one thing to do things in a class, it's one thing to do exercises, it's one thing to do uh, rehearsals, but once there's a live audience, it's a whole different kettle of fish. And um, the, uh, the mastery um, is that um, we, by our performance, have to be able to trigger the imagination of the audience in you. And your imagination is the canvas on which we paint the painting of the play. Why? Because human imagination, of course, is limitless. And what you can create for us is far more powerful than anything we can do on stage. That's the key. And that's a very, very, very difficult thing to master. That's the art of theater. Once we can do that, then there's no limit as to what any actor can do. And again, um, tonight, um, you're, you're going to see a play in a completely different style from last year. Um, we went from Expressionism with Bertolt Brecht, now we're going to the Theatre of the Observed, which is actually roughly the same period. The play was written around 1923 by a great Polish playwright, um, Ignacy Witkiewicz, or Witkiewicz, as they would call him in Russia, or Witkasi, as his nickname was. Uh, he's not that well known in North America, uh, but he is a star in Europe, uh, and, and some other continents as well, Latin America too. Um, a very, very popular playwright, and uh, really one of the fathers of the theater of the absurd, the absurdism. So tonight, we are basically trying to learn and create the style of the absurd, develop the proper form for it, and of course, hold it. The play escalates in absurdity, and of course, it's not naturalistic or realistic. Uh, it's quite crazy. And, but also incredibly challenging and incredibly difficult to do, especially the style of the absurd. But this is how we learn. And again, bear in mind that this is really, at the end of the day, an exercise piece placed in front of you, but we also hope that you get something from it too. Thank you very much for all of you for coming tonight. Our secret motto. Mm -hmm. However, perhaps Groon is right. I am not one of those stolen psychiatrists who are unable to accept anything new. Mm -hmm. I consent to this experiment, mm -hmm. especially since Professor Waldorf and I have exhausted all other means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dementia precox. Mm -hmm. If you, sister, could, although I doubt it very much, resolve the patient's uh, complex, as the psychoanalysis call it, and the penetrate mm -hmm, with the help of your feminine intuition into the dark spot in his soul, mm -hmm. the forgotten place, the psychic wound, as they say. I would be only too delighted in Groon's success. As for psychoanalysis, I acknowledge its diagnostic techniques, but I have no confidence whatsoever in its therapeutic value. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's fine for those who can devote their entire lives to being cured. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here's a chair. Very well, doctor. But what am I actually to do? How am I 
to go about it. Please don't attempt to do anything out of the ordinary, sister. Behave quite naturally and directly in accordance with your own intuition as your conscience dictates. However, under no circumstances should you gratify his wishes. Do you understand, sister? Doctor, I should like to remind you that you are speaking to a member of a religious order. Oh, please. Don't be offended, sister. <laughs> a mere formality. <laughs> Well, I shall say goodbye to you now. Mm -hmm. mm. Something else. Please remember, the most important thing is to bring to light his complex, stemming from a forgotten incident in his past which has disturbed him ever since. Mm -hmm. Is this a hallucination? Well, this has never happened to me before. What the devil? <laughs> Ends me. I'm not a phantom. I've been said to take care of you. Aha! <laughs> this is a new device on the part of my noble torturer. Devilish devices impinge on our senses, but the soul lies concealed. No one wants it revealed. But your name? I haven't seen a woman for two years. My religious name is Anna. Oh, well then, sister, give me a sisterly kiss. I can't kiss you. Oh, you're so pretty. What a pagan. I have come to bring peace to your tortured soul. I, too, am beyond life. Don't you see my nuns have it? I can't go on this way. I must control myself. Sister Anna, I'm a living Corpse. I don't need help. Only death. I'm more dead than you. You will be killed, and then your whole life will lie before. Why are you a nun? You're so young, so beautiful. Let's not talk about it. I must talk about it. You're very much like a woman who wants was everything to me. Yeah. Oh, perhaps I'm fully imagining it. <laughs> She's not alive anymore. Not alive. Oh, you too must have experienced something similar in your life. I fell to that once. He's not alive either. Oh, <laughs> God, is he? Let's not talk about that. I am now in a different world. But I am not. I envy you your other world. 
You've chosen your own home. But I have to live here in this terrible prison, in a world my torturers have forced on me, in a world I hate. But my real world is this clock, which is constantly tick-ink in my head, even while I'm asleep. I prefer death a thousand times, <laughs> but I can't die. That is the decree for all of us madmen who suffer without being guilty. We are tortured as if we were the worst criminals and were not allowed to die because society is benevolent, so very benevolent that it doesn't want us to stop suffering prematurely. <laughs> <laughs> Please get me out of this damn straitjacket. I'm suffocating. My arms are pulling loose from their sockets. I can't. The doctor didn't give his permission. So you're in league with my executioners. All right. Sit down. Let's talk. We have time. Oh, I have so much time. Only I don't know what to do with it. And I can't stand my own thoughts. I can't stand my thoughts going in circles as if driven by a machine. There's an infernal machine going in my head. It's been said, but I don't know for what hour of what day. I don't know when it will go oh. And I wait. I wait endlessly. At times I think that such torture cannot go on in me longer than a day passes, a night. Another day, and then chlorohydrate, morphine, nightmares when I'm asleep, and that terrible sensation on waking up, that everything is beginning all over again. And so on and so on. Please don't talk that way. Please, I beg you, calm yourself. If I can't help you at all, then I'll have to ask the doctor to relieve me of my duties here. Oh, no. <laughs> You'll never get out of here. Excuse me, sister. I'm in full possession of my senses. Let's go on talking. I'll be calm now. Try to understand that I haven't seen the woman for two Yes. What were we talking about? <gasps> Aha! You lost someone. Well, so did I. Tell me about it. Please, allow me to introduce myself. What? Alec, Xander, Walpurg. Walpurg? So it was your poetry my fiancé and I read together. Oh, how dreadful. And yet, I am so grateful to you. How many beautiful moments I owe to you. And everything has ended so horribly. And perhaps because the two of you read my poetry together. And besides, nothing has come to an end. The world goes on as if nothing had happened. But my third volume is not bad at all. I know what I'm talking about. After the third volume, I decided to check into this hotel. Alcohol. Morphine, cocaine, 
the end. And to top it all, disaster. Oh, could you, with such talent, what happiness to be an artist like you? Happiness? I got me. I wanted to write myself out to the very marrow and die, but no, hmm, society is benevolent. They saved me so that I could end my life being tortured here. Oh, their damn medical ethics. I'd like to murder that entire race of butchers. Do you know, sister, that when I was in school, I studied Hendrik von Kleist's biography? <laughs> I didn't understand it then. Now I understand it perfectly. But why have you poisoned yourself with drugs? Tell me, please, I can't understand it at all. A genius like you. What? You don't understand? My soul's fire has burned away my earthly shell. Now, don't you understand? My nerves weren't strong enough to resist that dead or something or other which compelled me to write. I had to poison myself. I had to gain strength. I didn't want to, but I had to. And once the whole machine, that old weak machine starts its lunatic motion. It has to go further and further, whether I'm still creative or not. The mind's exhausted, but the machine goes on and on. That's why artists have to do insane things. What can you do with a senselessly accelerated motor which no one can control? Imagine a long row of machines in a huge factory without any engineer in charge. All the pointers on the dials have already gone beyond the red arrow and everything rushes madly off. But why does it always have to end exactly like that nowadays? It used to be different. Before, art wasn't perverted. There was no insatiable craving for form. Life wasn't the aimless movement of soulless automatons. Society was not a machine. There was a soft, pulpy mass of suffering cattle. And out of it grew wonderful flowers of lust, power, creativeness, and cruelty. But let's not pursue this conversation any further. Let's talk about life, about our life. I have as much compassion for you as you have for me. My God, my God, my God! That's enough. There's only one thing certain. Today, the greatest artist found only in perversion and madness. I'm talking, of course, about form. But for the true creative artists, not the Japanese. The forms they create are intimately connected to their lives. And now, <laughs> Tell me about yourself, sister. Who was he? He was an engineer. <laughs> small cogs in the machine, and not a demented pedal among meshed iron gears. Go on. 
He loved only me. But he couldn't break it off with a certain woman. Ah. And finally, he had to end it all. He blew out his brains. Then I entered the convent. What? A lucky man! <laughs> Don't feel sorry for him. So, nowadays, even engineers can have problems like that. And that's why you entered. No, oh, how absurd. Why didn't I meet you first? And what would have happened? You would have tortured me to death the way you did that other woman. How do you know about that? Tell me this instant, how do you know that? No one knows anything about it. Who told you? Emma? Please address me as sister. How does sister know about it then? That's interesting. I'm quite calm. Can't you understand? I'm talking to you. I know your poetry. I know who and what you are now. Oh, yes. I'm a madman in a straight jacket. <laughs> it's that simple. But it isn't simple to torture someone to death the way I tortured I don't know which one of us killed the other. Well, she sacrificed herself. In the final analysis, I'm not guilty. She died of brain fever. I don't know if I killed her, or if she is actually torturing me to death now. Every day, sis. Dematically. After she died, I <laughs> read through her diary. And then I understood with what a dreadful, diabolical skill I had been tormenting her, but that's what she wanted. That's how she killed herself. And now she's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get in here? On account of my weak nervous system, the cocaine, <laughs> the clock in my head. And that eternal question of whether I killed her or she killed me. Even in the fraction of a second, I think two thoughts as different as God and Satan. What else is left? A few poems. Oh, they must have been published by now. My sister will make a little money from them. I have a sister whom I hate. What else is there? Mm, a little violence, and so I ended up here. But no one gets well here. You can see that for yourself. As a matter of fact, I'm in full possession of my senses. I just happen to have a tiny machine in my head. Whoever comes here is finished because their type of cure only pushes you further and further into madness. Well, you can try to tell them lies, but eventually you do something stupid. <laughs> you make one false step, and then you're locked up forever. Everything I've gone through seems so petty now. I used to believe that whatever happened to me was important and unique. Now there's nothing. Only a terrible, hopeless emptiness. I don't exist. 
exist anymore. He abandoned me forever. He abandoned you? But only out of shame. For your sake, he couldn't even give up some common slut. Some demonic old bag, some obscenity or other. Yes, I'm sure. There's a little important or unique in that. His death was proof of his despicable weakness. He could do anything for you, but what about me? Please put your hand on my head. Perhaps the clock will stop ticking, at least for a moment. I am composing poetry again now. But I think my poems are getting worse. I can't write anymore. But then you can also use a pencil to kill yourself. I will never improve. And yet new ideas come to me all the time. Sister, please hold my head in your hands. Oh, if only I could unscrew my head and put it away in a chest of drawers so that it could have a little rest. And then I could rest too. Yes, yes, rest. Just a little like this. There. Untie my hands, would you? Really? I'm in full possession of my senses. I can't. Please don't ask me to. The doctor took- The doctor? Do you want me to fly into a rage? It's always the same story here. You're their accomplice. First, they drive you into a state of frenzy. Then, they put you in a straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and so it goes on. Endlessly. Yes, yes, I know. Nothing else matters. I'll do anything for you. It will never come back. 
nothing ever comes back. We live only once, so whatever is destined to happen on this earth must happen. Any other way, it's a crime that will poison future generations with its bed. What's your real name? Lena. Lena. I'm sure you love me. Don't imagine I've always been this ugly. I didn't have a beard or mustache before. But once I tried to impale myself on the razor. And they stopped shaving. Oh, don't talk that way! I love you. Nothing exists in this whole world except you. You have an eternal damnation. There is no eternal damnation. The only rewards and punishments are right here in this world. Kiss me. I don't dare. No, not that. Not that. I'm afraid. You must. You must. This moment is the only one. <gasps> Is for you. I'm giving it to you as a talisman. I don't have the right to wear it anymore. I have special permission from Mother Superior to wear it. My mother gave me this cross. Thank you, Lena. Thank you for everything. You know, it's only now that I realize how utterly miserable I've been. Now that you love me. <laughs> Yesterday, simply to kiss your hair seemed beyond human happiness. Today, <laughs> now that you're mine, nothing else matters. I want to get out of here. Right? Work, shave off my beard and mustache, dress well again. I want to live, to live a perfectly ordinary life. I must get out of here. Yonsi, you've given me the strength to overcome anything. Let's both get out of here. I've been exactly the same. I'm not a nun anymore. I want to live a normal, quiet life. I've gone through so much. <laughs> yes, of course you'll get out. You're not in prison. Alina, don't betray me. That Dr. Bedello is my worst enemy. I prefer Groon. Even though he is a disgusting pig, too. You won't betray me. I fear that I've awakened your desires. And if you don't see me for a couple of days, someone else might begin to look attractive to you. I love you. Only you forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. I'd stay here myself if only you could get out. I love you for what you are. You must fulfill your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. I'm afraid for you. There's some <clears throat> violent force in me that I can't control. Necessity rules our lives. 
I have no will of my own in the usual sense of the word. There's some higher power above me or in me whose orders I am forced to follow. That's creativity. Perhaps it's God. He will forgive us. And my mother will forgive us also, even though she was a saint. Oh, wait just a minute. I haven't told you everything. It seems to me that maybe <laughs> I did kill her. Oh, but you don't know. Don't, don't say anything. Put this on quickly, you may come in a minute. But nothing's changed, has it? You're talking so strangely as if you suddenly stopped loving me. Nothing's changed. It's just that I'm afraid. I fear for our happiness. And now lie down and pretend to be asleep. Hurry! Remember, <coughs> don't betray me. There's so many attractive men in the world. So many scoundrels. Fucking nonsense! I think they're coming! Psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. I'll turn my patient over to you. Mm -hmm. There's a little too much of the sexual in your series. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I find questionable. Mm, but my dear colleague, the sexual drive is the most important thing in life. Mm -hmm. All complexes originate there. Mm. If you don't mind. I should like to wait the patient. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hello? Walpurg? It's me, Dr. Grun. Ah! It's you, Doctor. Well, I haven't seen you for a long time. I enjoy our conversations together. Why don't you come more often? I suppose Bidello has forbidden you to. Nothing of the sort. He's entrusted you completely to my care. I'm sure that I can cure you. How does your conversations with Sister Anna go? That was my idea. It was miraculous. She's a saint. I never felt better in my whole life. I'd like to write again. Splendid! Today, you'll be given 
pencil, a paper, a books too. Oh, but what kind of books do you want? Uh, the complete works of Tadusz Maczynski. Mm -hmm. And the second volume of Husserl's Logische Unterzugschund. Mm -hmm. Perhaps also Moraine. Mm -hmm. And the third volume of my own work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel so wonderful. Perhaps you'll be so kind as to introduce me to that tall lady dressed in a nun's habit. The Duchess of Vertigo. <laughs> so, I presume, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Wahlberg, my name is Sister Barbara. I am the Mother Superior of the Convent of the Voluntary Lady Martyrs. Please, do not forget. <laughs> Well, there's no need for me to introduce you two if you know each other already. Uh, Groom, perhaps you could take off my straight jacket. I'm stiff as a board. And besides, I'm in full possession of my senses. I couldn't possibly have another attack of hysteria. <laughs> I give you my word of honor. I slept like two tops. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Once on up to a madman. Hysteria when repressed breaks out every so often with we double strength. I can't give my consent. But, sir, Grimm is ready to vouch for me with his life. <laughs> Isn't that so, Grimm? Yes. Listen, Bidello. It's either, or, either he's my patient, or he isn't. Halfway measures will get us nowhere. Well. <laughs> All right. Go to it. But what would Professor Waldorf say? Mm -hmm. Ah, well, in view of <laughs> such good results, I shall answer for the professor as well. Walk. I will remove your straight jacket, and from now on, I am going to treat you as a convalescent. A turnaround. Isn't it somewhat premature, Dr. Grun? Ah, but Sister Barbara, please don't meddle in other people's business. If I were to analyze you, you'd leave the convent immediately. You have a penitence complex because of the guilt feelings towards your husband. Every minute he was alive, you tormented him in the most sadistic manner. I know everything. Please, do not forget yourself, Dr. Gruna. And do not repeat vulgar town gossip in my presence. This isn't gossip. I know what the facts are. <coughs> Walter, you're free. And in six months, we'll all leave here together and go into town. Look here. Have confidence in me for once. Thank you. <laughs> At last I found someone who can recognize a madman for what he is. I've had enough recognition as a poet. A groom, give me a pencil and a piece of paper. I must write down the first stanza of a new poem. <laughs> the idea came to me in my sleep. I'll do wonderful things with it. You see, sister, that's how one should treat the sick. <laughs> Our hospitals are worse than medieval prisons. Only psychoanalysis will free mankind from the atrocious nightmares of the lunatic asylum. What I am saying is that the prisons would be empty if everyone from childhood on were subjected to compulsory analysis which would eradicate all complexes. I can assure you that this man has a twin sister complex dating back to the time when he was still in embryo. <laughs> That's why he cannot fall in love. Subconsciously, he loves his sister, but in a normal state of consciousness, he feels genuine hatred for her. Walker! What is the first thing you associate with, sister? Sinister. 
a cave. Two orphans on a desert island. Via Stackpool's novel, A Blue Lagoon. Can you follow all that, sister? The cave is the mother's womb. And so is the desert island. But <laughs> resolved is complex now. On the second level, the novel, by the way, sister, have you read it? Has penetrated into his already developed psychic placenta. Whopper! In two weeks' time, you'll be fit as a fiddle. A doctor, in my opinion, it isn't right to flirt with a nun for quite such a long time. We were only talking about you. What I told you was just between the two of us. You see, sister, he is developing a healthy instinct for life. He's jealous. He can fall in love. <laughs> really? <laughs> At times, I have to laugh at all this psychoanalytic nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's for your flirtations with women in religious order. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Croak, you filthy executioner. I'm only sorry I couldn't put him through a few tortures before he died. You see, that's a healthy instinct for life. Groom, lend me your penknife. My pencil's broken. That moron had a hard skull. But you don't have a rival anymore. What have you done? It's all over now. Walpurg, have you gone mad? <laughs> Poor Bidello. He's dead. You hit him right in the temple. I'm completely cured now. <laughs> First, I identified him with my sister. And then, I killed them both with one blow. I'm sure she died at that very moment. <laughs> My complex is resolved. If psychoanalysis is worth anything at all, I should be let out free at once. I'm not dangerous anymore. Come now, Walter. Are you making fun of me? No, I'm speaking quite seriously. <laughs> I'm cured. That blow to the skull killed me. That's why I'm not responsible for the murder. But from now on, I will be responsible for everything I do in the future. Mother Superior, you're in a daze. Wake up. I was simply defending the honor of a member of a religious order from the advances of an ordinary Don Juan in a doctor's uniform. Isn't that so? I am sure this psycho expert has had any number of love affairs in the woman's ward. Oh, <laughs> these are entirely jokes. You are an utter madman. <laughs> and if not, you're just an ordinary criminal. This is unheard of. So you really feel all right. I said so all day. I'll consider my personal enemy anyone who treats me like a madman. I'd like some breakfast. I'm hungry. <laughs> and please, look after Sister Anne. Can't you see she's not altogether well? The Duchess can't revive her. I can't believe it. He resolved his complex all by himself, just as easily as falling out of bed. It's quite incredible. What will happen now? Things will go on much the same as before. We must not question the will of God. What have you done with your cross? Everything happened the way it did, because today I left my cross in the cell. My mother's cross was my only protection. 
You should be ashamed to believe in such a superstitions. Go to confession at once. Perhaps I'll go tomorrow. After what has happened, I am unworthy. I must examine my conscience. Go this very minute. Do you hear me? Get a good rest, sister, and come again this evening. Our talks do wonders for me. After all, I couldn't talk about myself with an idiot like you. No! This must come to an end now. I will not have my sister turn into victims or murderers. Groom, your penknife. What? A sister Barbara? He will be putting his straitjacket to be on the safe side. I can assure you there will be no more crimes. <laughs> but what are you thinking at? Bring him his breakfast immediately! <laughs> describes a similar case. His patient became a model husband and an excellent architect when he butchered his aunt when she came to visit him. He had an ant complex and he resolved it. Psychoanalysis alone allowed him to do this. I am willing to sacrifice even my life if that is necessary. Sister Barbara, I implore you, do not deny me penance for my grave sins. So be it. I consent. Perhaps God wills it. And perhaps behind all these there are some higher meanings not intelligible to us, the poor in spirit. Go to bed, Sister Anna. And do not go to confession. But this evening, you will come on duty at 10 o'clock. Eat, Walpurg. Eat. You deserve a decent meal after all this. I will forgive everything. There is no crime without a complex and a complex. But just a moment. Is a sickness. Don't interrupt me. The last line. I need one more word. Oh. There, I finished. Now I have finally cleared my brain of the last trace of madness. The clock has stopped ticking. I have no pangs of conscience whatsoever. Oh, an old, wonderful lesson for the old psychiatric school. I'll write a monograph about you. I'll be world famous. Psychiatry received its best lesson in the person of Mr. Bedell. I never liked that idiot or his manners toward women. For the last five years, he saw me as a victim. But when he began to interrelate with sister, well, well, then I just couldn't stand it any longer. Walter, <laughs> you're the greatest genius in the world. I love you. <laughs> Enough of your familiarity. Don't pester me. Eat. He's grown as familiar with me as he would any of his psychiatric cases. <laughs> Keep your distance. Do you understand? Give me back my penknife. Give me back my penknife. <laughs> there you are. You coward! One 
murder per day is quite enough for me. <laughs> it isn't my custom to trample on cockroaches. Get out! Put number 20 in his straitjacket! Quickly! <laughs> A game of make-believe. <laughs> we madmen are the shrewdest people. Our instincts are so wonderfully acute that even animals seem stupid in comparison. Laugh, Walter. Laugh. But no matter what you do, you will be cured. I don't care about your silly first flying. The important thing is that dementia precox, as it is called, can in fact be cured by resolving complexes. You must be very tired, my poor dear. Not at all, not at all. I slept like a log all day long. I slept away fifteen years of sleeplessness. I feel splendid. And you actually know, after all that's happened, I think there's no place on earth worthy of me except this cell. I don't even have any desire to leave it. Read my poem. I have stage fright, I can. It's absolutely marvelous. I am reading the Bible under a tree, and time is fleeting. Narcotics lurk among the shrubs covered with sun, dew, and flowers. In the midst of the breath of the morning breeze, give me milk, milk straight from the cow, and eggs straight from the hen. I want to be healthy, one of the good guys. I want to hold my head up high. But suddenly the simple question, what for? <laughs> Is it worth it? And mouth wide open, I've sucked in every drug at once. And pale as paper, sheet, or handkerchief, I've plunged into the world of an unknown battle with an unknown foe <laughs> who may be Satan, who may be God. This is no battle only. Draw in the reins, ready arms, march only. <laughs> the stuffing of my brains ran into other men's skulls. Superb! But when you're with me, everything will be different. Isn't that so? No more drugs. I'll be everything to you. Perhaps so. Oh, no. But first of all, come what may, we must get out of here as soon as possible. Only, don't go into excessive ecstasies over my works. This is the beginning of something entirely new. But in itself, it's not. You know, I'm so happy I feel guilty. Oh, if only I could suffer a little. Oh, life beyond this cell has no meaning for me either. If we were left here for all eternity, I would be perfectly satisfied. It's so absolutely marvelous to be with you. Everything has meaning now, and to think that it's a completely senseless life for so long. Darling, I must confess, when you killed the devil, you 
Oh, uh, to my desires to the point of madness. You excite me tremendously. It's monstrous! My perverse darling. If only I were allowed to write when I am here alone. I must keep myself completely in check so that that nitwit won't have me put back in the straitjacket. Yesterday I couldn't control my emotions. <laughs> I have to kill that hideous brute. Don't talk about it, Alex. Rest. Lean against me and forget all that. I'd like to make up for those two agonizing years you've gone through. We have no idea what awaits us. Everything will be all right now. We'll go somewhere far away. As far as the tropics, I was there once with her. But her spirit won't disturb us now. That was man's. The same as your love for your idiot. <laughs> We are destined for each other. We are that ideal couple who's meeting the universe demanded. Oh, why didn't it happen sooner? But perhaps it's better this way. Ah, a cross. 
The one she always wore on her breast. Yet, another sacrilege. Quelque chose de norme. It's her mother's cross, which I allow her to wear as a favor in view of her irreproachable conduct. I beseech you, forgiveness! I shall die in despair. I have nothing at all now. Not even the possibility of penance. Your place is in the street. Slept! Oh, kill sap! <laughs> then wait for me. Eat! <laughs> Professor Waldorf will undoubtedly want to do an autopsy and check for brain damage. I'll let him look. <laughs> well, Sister Anna, pull yourself together and let's get out of here at long last. Get up. Get up. It's me, Alex. Darling, is it really you? And what's that? Oh, what does it matter? I'm so happy I'll probably go mad. You're so attractive. My one and only. We're going to town tonight. <laughs> Oh, here's a dress for you, Miss Alina, uh -huh. and a uh, hat. Alexander and I pick these things out in a hurry at first glance. Oh, you have to change your clothes. Perhaps these will do for the time being. Uh, let's go. <laughs> I'm really completely sane now. Sane and happy. I'll write something marvelous. Keep well. <laughs> and after this, analyze yourself thoroughly. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Professor, <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going oh, on here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I'm through with psychiatry. I'm going back to surgery. Brain operations once made me famous. And I'm taking Bidello as my assistant. That's blackmail. No, it is it. A uh, Bidello. Hop, skip, and away. Now. I feel a new complex coming on. Kind of complex. I don't know what any of this is about. That's all your psychiatry is. If my declining years, I cannot tell anymore who is mad. You? Or I? Or these people? Oh, please, God. God, take pity on me. <coughs> we are the madmen. They locked us up for good. He's the one. He's the worst madman. Hit him, Bidello! Stay where you are. I can explain it all to you, and maybe it will become clear to me too. Ah, well then, explain it yourself if you're so smart. Bidello, hit him! <laughs> hit him, Bidello! 